with Jesse Simonton and Austin Price. I'm Brent Hubbs for a um, quick recap, quick pod, instant react podcast from uh, well, midnight absolute, edition. A midnight edition from a bizarre, wild, improbable at times, underwhelming at times uh, football game that Tennessee wins to get to five and five. Jeremy Pruitt's seven to nine minute opening monologue sounded like Tennessee lost the football game. Yet they didn't. They found a way to win the football game in a tale of two halves and redemption stories continue, Jesse, and uh, unlikely heroes continue for this Tennessee football team. Just your instant reaction to, to Tennessee finding a way to win this football game 17-13. The game, the result happened not exactly how I expected. I, I obviously picked Tennessee to win, but the fact that they did actually have so much trouble um, particularly in those first nine minutes of the game with Kentucky's, you know, multiple players and even Jeremy Pruitt kind of alluded to it as a triple option attack. Um, but for all the mistakes they had, jumping off sides, yeah, how many touchdowns were wiped off the board? You know, at times they had to score twice just to get a touchdown in because of self, you know, self-inflicted mistakes. Running back doesn't line up correctly on the line, so Austin Pope's penalized it, but it wasn't his fault. It was running back's fault. Have to score again. Because he had three touchdowns call, I mean, called back tonight. But every time they messed up, some other guy would make a play. I mean, you, you know, you, in another world, Hubs, you could see this, my, my review piece on Sunday being, you know, two steps forward, three steps back sort of deal if they lose this game. Right. Because of, the, you know, the stakes that, that, that could have been in play. Instead, you know, as we had in the two minute, I mean, they're, they're now. With the tax slayer bo- folks that were in attendance, and I, I think now you, you got to like Tennessee's chances to not only get to a bowl game because of Vandy in the finale, but if you find a way to win at Mizzou, I, I think there's going to be a whole sea of orange kind of invading Jacksonville right around New Year's. Yeah, Austin, there's tons to get to in this game. We're going to get to some of the breakdown and some individual plays, some play calls that were head scratchers and all that. But the resolve of this team. To, to find a way to win this to, this game after you fell behind 13 to nothing, clearly they weren't going to be able to win this game a year ago like this. And I don't know that they could have won a game like this the first month of the season. Well, we know they couldn't because of BYU. I mean, like the way they finished tonight versus how you know. I mean, I think those are you talk about tale of two halves True. or whatever. That's a tale of Tennessee's season, in my opinion. Well, I mean, when you look back, you know, at this game, and you know, Brent, you talked about it at times improbable, and it was, I mean. You know, if you know they got off this terrible start, and you know they had no rhythm at all on offense. Then they finally get a little bit of a rhythm on the one drive, and Trey Smith, you know, God love him. That's you, that's who he is. I mean, it's how he's going to play. He no, gets but the, that was stupid. That, this yes, wasn't like yes, this silly. wasn't a little I, bit playing after the whistle. That was a dumb penalty. Yeah, but he's done that throughout his career. That having these kind of you know a little bit too rambunctious and goes in there jumping in like he's coming off the top rope in a WWE event point is is that's just that's who he is it's silly it's a dumb penalty you're exactly right it's just like the late hit by Matthew Butler got to be smarter than that uh, and know who you're who's back there throwing the you know throwing the peel trying to throw it 40 yards um, but you know you go and look at this game and you thought with eight minutes to go Tennessee's got the ball after the you know fourth down stop they're going to go and, 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 and win the football game if they go put points on the board it's over and then I thought it was a phenomenal play call because if they if Ty actually gets the handoff that backside run he's gonna go for 15 maybe more and, and you know JG after the game you know said it was on him said he had two hands because he's struggling to hand off you know it, that particular way felt like maybe the ball got stuck to him a little bit kicked forward Kentucky was all the way down penalties you know gets him down to basically the one yard line Tennessee. I mean, it, it, Tennessee's head coach did just, not feel like it was on the quarterback. I mean, Ty got pulled after that. He did not get correct. back in the game. Yeah, yeah, that's right, because it was right in the belly. But I go back, you go back and watch that replay. He does have two hands on the ball trying to hand off to Ty. You, you could argue it either way. The yeah. point is, this team found a way to win. They did it in, in you know, a true team fashion. JG coming off the bench. You, know, you had guys in there at the end, like you know, Blakely. Um, you, know, you had you – know, uh, the big kid out of you know, Elijah, Elijah Simmons, Simmons. Played, played key snaps tonight, especially down there at the end. I mean, they they, they just gutted it out. And, and you know, again, the, the good thing for Jeremy is, is he does have this two-week break now to preach to them, look at last year, look at last year, look at last year. 
I mean, the teaching moments that he's able to have with some of these guys, um, I think can help them down the stretch. If you'd have told me going into this game that Jerry Garantano was the leading rusher for Tennessee and Tennessee won the football game, I don't, I, I'm, I don't think I would have taken, I'm not sure I would have taken that bet unless Tennessee won a, a 6-3 rock fight, Jesse. But, but Jared finishes up the leading rusher. This is a Kentucky team giving up 170-something yards a game on the ground. 12th Tennessee, in the SEC. Tennessee rushes for 83 yards. But interestingly, running back carries 11. Tennessee didn't really even try to run the football. Now, I know they got behind 10 nothing, but for whatever reason, Jim Chaney, maybe with a banged-up offensive line, did not feel like his team could run the football, and no, he didn't try. I will say that you're right about that. I will say that I wonder if on, on the review tomorrow when I rewatch it, if I know it, there was specifically two instances I did know, and I had it in the chat, that – Mauer made bad reads on RPOs, where he got pass happy on RPOs, okay. and and I think maybe that led to perhaps you know Jeremy uh, pulling Evi the plug, eviscerating I mean, him at the he half, eviscerated <laughs> him on the Ball Network <laughs> halftime thing. He then after the game, you know, basically said, you know, your offense doesn't have a chance if the quarterback's not throwing it to the correct side of the field. There was definitely one where Tennessee had a screen, a wide receiver. Pope goes out in motion, they flex it out. I think Callaway. It was basically a three-on-two advantage, and, and yet he throws it back to the, uh, I guess that would be the right, towards Jawan, incomplete pass. I mean, Mauer threw it 16 times in the first half. I, I know Cheney likes to sling it, but, you know, that, was, that, that did not seem to be uh, a recipe for success. But then J.G. comes in, and he starts this. He, he goes seven for seven for 115 yards and two touchdowns in, in half a quarter, and that ended up being the difference. Outside of – you know, doing it just because you, you want to keep the same mojo going. It, to me, there's no way you go back to 12 or 18. I, I, this is, you know, this two's just, he, he's the guy leading you. And, and right now, he's got the juice, and, 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 I, and I get it, he still has his flaws, but, I mean, he's the guy that the coaching staff feels most comfortable with. And I know, for whatever reason, he did not play the first half. They went with Brian, but, you know, Mauer to me still got a lot of flaws in his game too. He he he'll flash, mm -hmm. but you know the consistency to me spells doom on the road in a, a game at Missouri. If you let him stay in there too long, I, I would roll with with two right out of the gate, unless you're gonna start the game of fifteen at quarterback just for you know fun. Would you go that way, Jesse, or would you keep this? Middle relief, long relief, save, what, whatever this thing you got going on with Jared. I mean, is he better sitting and watching for, for a period of time, or do we have any idea? Yeah, I think he's better watching, but, I mean, two, two, two series hubs, not the second half. I think that tonight was the, the, the outlier. Like, the, the fact he did not play in the first half when, when Mauer – Well, they didn't have the ball in the first quarter. Yeah, yeah I, do right. wonder, I do wonder, I do wonder, like, because, you know – well, we can break down some some different some various plays of this game. The game could have gotten away from Tennessee if Bowden, who was fan, phenomenal running the ball, did not just make an inexplicably terrible pass on a pretty good play call by Eddie Grant. Warrior, about the comes, interception up, for Warrior comes up with a pick, but he was beat on that oh, yeah. play. You lollipop that thing in there, and and Kentucky's up twenty to three. And this game could be looking a lot different. It, it, Tennessee gets the interception. They're in plus territory. I think that, you know, that, that is where clearly it's been the reverse, actually, Hubs, where he said the reverse just a week ago with Jarrett and J.T. Shrout. He was like, we kept Jarrett in because we were, you know, in the red zone or near the red zone, which is why we didn't want to make the quarterback change. They seem to have the same plan this way because they, they kept Maurer in. They went go three and out again. Were, were you not surprised, though, from a standpoint of, you didn't really see Jawan at quarterback tonight. I mean, maybe it was time and place, and the fact that the you know Kentucky's first drive literally took two thirds of the first quarter off the board before Tennessee ever walked out on the field. Kentucky ran the ball more than Tennessee had total plays. I mean, like way more. Yeah, I, I mean, I, I don't know. This one on the field that often. I, I thought I thought Jawan. I mean, Jawan did some good things. He, had, he ended up with three catches for forty nine yards. Had another tackle on special teams. He looks a little tired to me. And rightfully so, because he's playing a, a whole bunch. He, he didn't, in the second half, th there wasn't as much Juwan. He couldn't maybe get his open. Maybe they were just doubling him. Um, the, the, the two things from, from Jim Chaney's play calling that, that baffled me. One, they had the series where, where Ty runs it for seven yards, 
and you think, okay, they're going to get a little more balance here. And then they come out when Mowers on the – and it's in the first half, Mowers in the game. And, and they throw the, the two passes. Now, one of those looked like – or maybe that should be one of those RPOs that you were talking about. Yeah. The, the other one was, what was the bring the Mauer in for one play, trick play deal there where he fumbled, fumbled the, snap the snap and fell yeah. out? What? Did he get his helmet knocked off? No, JG's no. helmet never came off. No, he just – I mean, they, maybe, had, maybe. they had some special play they were going to run there, apparently. And it was like, why? You know, uh, those play calls were kind of, you know, mind-boggling. But nothing tops the cake more than Eddie Grant's decision to throw it deep. You get your third, on, and, third and 15, Bowden bails you out and gets 12 on a run. And so you're facing third and very manageable three yards. Fourth and, he, and three. Fourth and three, excuse me, yeah. fourth and three. And you decide to ch- – just, and it wasn't anywhere near anybody. Dude. I mean, it was like the, an arm punt to no man's land. Yeah, I mean, what, what – but that call, that call made absolutely zero sense to me. None. I mean, he was I – mean, even if you just let him drop back to pass and just tell him to start scramble, like, hey, we're going to send everybody deep and you just start running around. He's a much better player doing that than he is trying to throw the football. I oh, know yeah. he completed a couple well, of balls, I, I mean, but the deep shot there made zero sense for well, the play I, in, in terms of strange coaching decisions, I, I, I looked at AP. I put it in the chat, too. I looked at AP at the end of the first half, and I said, what in the hell is Jeremy doing letting these, this time run off for Kentucky's fourth down? To only, if to you're do, going to, to throw then try to make a play to score before halftime, what happens? They lose 30 seconds. Mm-hmm. They allow Kentucky to call a timeout. Tennessee ends up not having enough time to attempt a field goal, so they have to just chuck it deep for a Hail Mary when they complete because Callaway was huge tonight. I mean, he made three just monster catches, one-on-one, uh, you know, all just kind of back shoulder plays, and he went up and just boxed out rebound. And, and But, again, you got nothing out of one of them because you decided to just – waste the time out and, and go into the half with, with one in your – well, they ended up using it, but they had to use it later than they needed to. Yeah, Josh Palmer, by the way, huge tonight. What a great catch he had on the touchdown. Uh, great ball placement by, by Jared. Uh, but to get the foot down there was, was a big-time play. When you go back two years ago, Hubs, he had a, several key drops in this stadium. Mm-hmm, he did. And tonight had several sh- – that one catch, obviously, you just highlighted – but then, you know, before that, he had the nice catch where his knee was down. I mean, you know, he, he made another catch from Maurer in the first half uh, on, a, on a key third down conversion on that drive that led to a field goal. In the middle of the field. Um, you know, he, he, to me, he had his best game of the year. Yeah, and that's – Most know, complete game. Well, and we, we've been kind of waiting for him. I mean, we talked about him in the preseason yeah. as a guy who's, you know, maybe come on and it's not really been there for him. But, but tonight, he, he showed up in a big-time way. Um, again, some – I'll, normal cast of characters. I mean, Callaway and Jennings, but but the Palmer contribution, if he can do something consistently, opens up the field a little bit more for Jim Cheney moving mm-hmm. forward. Oh, absolutely. And in, in terms of just kind of unsung plays or unsung, uh, I mean, obviously we mentioned Blakely. Bump has played well tonight, uh, especially in the second half. But I mean, the game also because of Ty Chandler's fumble, you you, you run through the dominoes and what ifs. Middleton was just okay, but his block on the field goal, Huge. on the extra point, that ended Huge. up being the difference because yep. Kentucky kicks a field goal and who, you know, you're going into overtime. You're going into overtime probably, and and so that ended up, uh, and then Jim so Chaney. It's would, a great lesson, by the way, to players out there and to the teammates. To coaches say it all the time: four or five plays are going to make a difference. You never know when it's going to happen. At the time, that was like, okay, I mean, Kentucky's like, yeah, whatever, okay, block, exactly, extra point, no big deal. Turns out. It's, difference it's, in the game. Yeah, difference in the game. Anyway, go ahead. Just yeah, and I, I just I didn't want I didn't want us to not to look over that because the three fourth down stops in the second half and all that you know the 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 play by I mean I got it on video I put it on the site Toa Toa just sticking the guy and then he got some help but I mean he just met the running back in the hole on third down and then for Tennessee to be prepared for the fourth down plays those obviously were plays of the game but can't overlook the the, the block by Darrell Middleton just because of how the final score ended up playing out. How about how about Henry gets hurt, goes to the Kentucky I, medical facility to get an X-ray, I guess, or he had a big old thing on his knee. You know, got some kind of evaluation, and then he comes back out and plays, and and, and, and was a huge was factor effective. in the game. Oh yeah, I mean that the, the, Jesse mentioned the stick he had, he had that, down I, there. I, it was something with his kneecap. He had that kneecap iced hard after the game. Um, yeah, credit for him coming in there and talking too. I mean, it would have been real easy just to get on the bus and. 
Mm-hmm. They were a happy locker room. We could hear them. Yeah. I mean, oh, they, yeah. Yeah, they, there was some clear, some obvious jubilation. But to a man, every single person, you know, kind of noted what Austin alluded to. You, you had talked about. I mean, they were in this position a year ago, and how do you finish? Well, and I you think know, let's celebrate now. But how are we going to finish? And and the, and the bye week couldn't come at a better time. Well, and we know because we've had conversations, Austin, you and I, Jesse, all of us have had this conversation with the head football coach. This was the game when you look at the November schedule. This was the game that he was most bothered he, he by told me, because of the schedule. He told me back in the summertime, he broke down every game with me on the phone one night. And he went toe-to-toe and, and talked about how he felt like South Carolina was a it was probably the most one of the most winnable games on the schedule based off of where they were coming out of then the juggernaut of schedule that they have and then he said the one game that he feared the most was Kentucky because it's the end of a long stretch and Kentucky's coming off a bye and so uh, you know for them to gut it out you know after one and four to be four and one in their next five and play the you know what you know what at the time was the number one team in the country Alabama really really tough um, and win in different ways, man. They win by scoring 41 points. They win by, you know, Mississippi State and Kentucky where they just kind of gut it out and just do what, just what, whatever it takes to get the job done. Um, you know, again, though, it, it's going to be the message and that, you know, uh, you know J- Jesse talk, has talked about it numerous times, the, the, you know, never again, you know, signs all over the complex of the scores against Georgia and Bama and Florida last year. In reality, those need to be replaced by the scores of Missouri and Vanderbilt. Yep. Because the next two weeks, because that's what the, the, you know he he hit it right after the game. The, Jarrett talked about it, and that's going to be the theme. Do not let what happened to you last year happen to you this year. Finish. Just finish the game. Finish the season the way you finished tonight's game. Well, and you like their chances of doing so for a couple of reasons. One, the two teams they're playing are struggling. Okay, Missouri's having a hard time. And they get Florida next after getting shut out by Georgia. Vanderbilt's just a mess right now because of all their quarterback stuff. They didn't score a point today. The other thing you like to, to me, Jesse, is you like the leadership of this team this year compared to the leadership that you had a year ago. And that's not a knock on seniors that had departed. But Batuli, maybe he's not the loudest guy in the world, but he's getting guys lined up. He's playing, his, example guy. He's playing his best football, 19 tackles in this game. Warrior a year ago was checked out. I mean, he was ready for the season to be over. He's not right now. He's playing well. Eight tackles, had the interception. Physical in the run game, coming downhill. Wasn't perfect tonight by any means. But the buy-in for some of those veterans is at a different level than a year ago, which makes you optimistic about Tennessee's chances close. And the fact the schedule is not as rough. Yeah, and absolutely. And I, I, you know, and I've I've written about this. I've taught, you know. Jeremy likes to harp a lot about how young this team is, and overall they are young. There are plenty; of, there is plenty of youth that is helping this team. But I do think the turnaround has been spearheaded by a group of veterans, and specifically mostly seniors or guys that aren't going to be here next year. Uh, that do, and, and Daryl Taylor even kind of said it tonight. You know, they want to leave Tennessee in a better place than when they got here, and obviously it's been rough, and they've been through some of the darkest, you know, times. They're looking like they could be the group that kind of spearheads this turnaround. And so we're, we're talking about Daryl Taylor, Mark West Calloway, Jawan Jennings, Nigel Warrior, Danny Batuli, Jarrett Garantano, Trey Smith, Brandon Kennedy. I mean, you know, Pruitt's like, we only got X amount of – well, all those guys right now are your best players. <laughs> and, and sprinkle in your Toa Toas, sprinkle in – you know, Carving gets maligned all week. Apparently he was terrible in practice. He comes out, he's pretty good tonight. And give K-Ron Calvert K-Ron credit, Calvert. too. And I, mean, I, and I told AP, I mean, Jarrett was throwing some nice 50-50 balls, but that, the, the, you know, AP and I, that was probably the best two series in pass protection. Oh, the dude, there was a wall. Back to back, where it was just like, all right, I'm just, I, just get, I can just sit back here and just throw the pill. I well, mean, I got, there's nothing to worry about. Well, and give Jarrett credit, too. On, on a couple of ch- couple of chances or a couple of opportunities where it looked like there was going to be ran. Credit, he climbed the pocket. He got outside. He kept his eyes downfield. He ran it a couple of times. He played the, at a The throw to Palmer pace. where his knee was down, he climbed the pocket, uh-huh. fired a strike. You know, he, he, he made plays with his legs. The third down play right before that when he got it was when uh, – 
he, he climbed the pocket. He saw that Tim was going to be able to peel out and, and, right. and, and set that block take, up set perfectly. Set that block yeah. up perfectly and, and get the first down. Yeah. And that was a hell of a call by Cheney for the, for at the end. I mean, to call a naked boot there, you know, yeah. I mean, that's that's a gutsy call because it didn't look like, you know, it did look like they may, they may, they may have to punt it I back. I thought it was going to go all John Elway there just trying to get the first down. <laughs> you know, I mean, like, think about it. If you, he shouldn't throw a pass the next two weeks. I mean, like, just, just totally get him healthy. It does not – some of these guys, the Henrys – Well, the tonight guys, he said he didn't know he was, if he was going to get to throw a pass. Yeah. That was, that was also crazy. After the game, Jarrett saying that he didn't even know if he was going to play. But, I mean, like, you know, Bryce Thompson comes out of this game, does not play after yep. uh, the, the, the Kentucky second touchdown. Um, you know, Henry's obviously had that knee wrapped. And, and, of course, he gutted it out. But, I mean, those are the kind of guys, you know – these next two weeks to me are for the Jackson Lampleys and the Elijah Simmons and the guys that are, you know, you know, you know that you know, potentially could play them the last couple of games. Anybody that you feel like can play, you know, Darnell Wright, again, wouldn't, wouldn't practice him at all, at, at least until game week of Missouri. Well, and What ten- good does that do? Tennessee's going to take tomorrow night off, su- Sunday night no practice, Monday's going to be off, Tuesday's going to be a, a weight room type deal. They're not going back to the practice field until Wednesday to try to catch their breath, to try to get you know recharge the batteries and get back doing and get back to getting healthy, they'll do it as a five and five football team, which to me is as improbable as anything. Where we <laughs> thought this team was coming from Gainesville, Florida, going into that open date, not many people were betting on this team going going on a four and one run, going four and one over their next five to get to five and we, five. We, I we, certainly was. We sat here at twelve twenty seven. Uh, on Sunday morning in Lexington. And my bold prediction is is that Jarrett Garantano plays for Tennessee football next year. I, 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 I don't know what it is. I just I, These people have had him pegged to leave. I had him pegged to leave, rightfully so. But it would not surprise me at all if, 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 if he finishes the season like he's played, if he's not you know, back with this football team in 2020. Yeah, we'll see how he finishes. And, and yeah. I, I, you know, I, I wouldn't rule it out either. We'll see how uh, – but I also wouldn't rule out him moving on. But, look, no, nobody has surpassed him or supplanted him on this roster at the quarterback position. Nope. That's obvious, as we said here at 1230 in Lexington, Kentucky, uh, wrapping up the, this Tennessee win. Can Tennessee finish out the season the right way? That'll be the, that'll be the challenge for a Tennessee team and, that found a way tonight – and, and, and some of the most improbable things. And not that it matters, because I don't think one win helps you in recruiting. But to win tonight in front of Octavius Oxendine, to win tonight in front of Tyler Barron, to win tonight and doing it with, you know, with, with good play on defense in the second half, making plays and, and, and that kind of thing, to me, the only, it, 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 it does help a little. It does not, it, you know, Tyler Barron's not going to pick Tennessee because Tennessee beat Kentucky. Just like I don't think he was going to pick Kentucky if – Kentucky had won this game. I mean, well, like, but it, it, he's going to pick them the place. To, but it does – it gives everybody more of a sense of, okay, we're, he, we're on an upward arc, as Jeremy said after the game. Right, which is exactly what he said. So Tennessee heads into an open date, a key open date, at 5-5 five and five with an opportunity, believe it or not, to go 7-5 and five on the season after a goal line stand, um, after a 17-0 run, a 17 unanswered, and a goal line stand – preserves that for a second half shutout as Tennessee beats Kentucky 17-13. That's going to do it for an extended version of an Instant React podcast for Jesse Simonton and Austin Price. I'm Brent Hubbs. Have a great Sunday, everybody.